but she has a lot. And one of the things I want to say about Iola Leroy in particular is that Iola Leroy is, you know, a, a story, of course, with plot and themes and all this, but it is also a p explicit political statement yes. for somebody in 1892. It's an explicit, it's just like, you know, the, the texts on lynching, the things that are coming up at the same time. It is just the same. And so we have neglected the, the political, the attempt, what it means as sort of attempt at using literature to address the different tensions within the community and the society. And, and so it's a very politically sophisticated document. And I want people to understand that as they instead, oh, what kind of text is this? Oh, it's so simple. No, 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 no. Instead, she's got all the different pieces. She's got the famous people, you know, surrogates for, she's got all of this, all the arguments. She's got the salon. She's got all this. She's got Iola Leroy's development. Yes. As a, as a young woman to something else or her future. Mm -hmm. She then ends the book with, you know, a sort of hope that she knows in 1892 will not come to pass. Dr. McKnight, I am so glad that you have pivoted to Iola Leroy. Um, I would love for you to talk a bit more about one of the things that struck me about your reading of the text is the importance you place on the concept of choice, choice that the characters make, self-possession. And, and uh, that's so important, I think, because you just um, you just mentioned that um, Harper, um, truly, that we can assess her life as a success. We in Philadelphia, oh, by the way, everybody, I have to say this, Dr. McKnight is a graduate of, of Swarthmore College as well. So there is a local connection um, uh, there. Uh, but, but we are very proud that, that Frances E.W. Harper um, maintained her, her personal sovereignty, that she maintained her, um, uh, that she cared for and looked after herself, that she kept her home at 1006 Bainbridge Street. Um, yes in South Philadelphia, uh, and uh, that she was able to live and die on her own terms and, and ultimately doing so alone, having buried her husband, having buried her daughter. Yes. Um, but in your reading, you really emphasize um, the importance of choice around issues of race, around issues of, um, of alliance, social and, and, and political alliance, not just for Iola, who has a, a unique kind of choice as a person who phenotypically um, yes. can pass as a, a Caucasian American, but even for other characters, her uncle and other characters, the characters in the book. Could you talk a little bit about why that's so important? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because we have we have something called a genre called the passing, passing yeah. novel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't read Iola Leroy that that way at all. Instead, what she's trying to do in it. And you, you also, I, I think we need to be cautious as a very sophisticated black readership. Mm -hmm. We have to be cautious not to read in. Yes, of course, you ask the questions that are re that are resonant in your time. Yes. But we have to also be like, why are we asking that question of a text when this is one of the first texts, right? Yeah. Mm. You remember that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this was, you know, a, you know, a novel, not serialized. Like this was. The, the full thing came out, right? Um, yeah, I know I said that clumsily, but but really what she's doing is she's saying, okay, one of the choices that we have to make as a, as a free, formerly enslaved community with the tensions we have with that, North and South, different types of occupations. She's very explicit. It's a class thing as well. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it is gender all the way through and there's sexuality stuff in there as well right um you know and i i'm not being glib about it i'm just trying to get to the the issue that she's taking these different things and she says look how we constitute ourselves iola leroy makes a choice when she leaves slavery and is in the armed encampment she makes a choice of saying yes i could do this and it is not it is, um, but I'm not going to, and I'm not going to pass. It's it's very, it, it, it's it's not just her saying it on, let's say, after about 40, 50 pages of the book. Um, it has been said before that by others yes. while they were enslaved. So the one of the more, a core message of the book, as you write about choice, but it's also about what are the obligations for those of all of us 
who have experienced, was Du Bois says, living under the veil. Mm, yes. Right. And the and she also makes it about realizing that that there are some people who don't realize it, and her other texts are definitely about this, where people realize who they are, and through that process, um, in other words, there are certain experiences. Now these can be shared by other people, right? But there is an obligation that you don't have to choose because she does have examples of people who don't who just drift off yes. right but she's saying that this is and this is how i'm trying to talk about her sort of political narrative what she offers us she says to make the choice of not supporting the black community as much as we can in the particular ways that meet our personal needs right with all the different because remember very different characters very different she has you know the 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 farm hand and she has the sophisticate. She has the medical doctor. I'm talking about black people, right? In Iola Leroy, she has a whole range of people, right? Um, and she even toys with the idea of the former master or mistress, right? And their obligations also. She thinks that the obligations to the black community are definitive of what we mean by America. Mm. And so the choice we make, I, I know I generalized it, but I think that the choice that she offers up is no choice. But but she also says that you know you cannot berate because she does this with with different figures in the text. You can't not, not berate those who can't make those choices. Who who can't find themselves like there's the white doctor who's in love with her and and essentially she's like we we can't have we can't sort of close our romantic relationship the romantic possibilities because you can't understand the obligation that not just i have but that you should have yes that you should have this is not a only a black thing as long as you say now as a black person i can say yeah it's a black thing you know like this right and i'm fine but all of a sudden i'm looking around and i'm like wait a second you know, that's not what Francis Harper is saying. Francis Harper is saying, yes, there are black readers for the text. That's something we have to remember. There are plenty of black, like, you know, remember she has a history of, of being in the black community talking about the different things, right? But there are white readers of the text. And she's saying through a series of relationships that she develops, right, that the choices, she actually has like three or four relationships that she describes as white men in particular, but white women also, making particularly bad choices if you want to say it that way <laughs> right like this but then she's but by doing that there's no question by doing that she's also offering up good choices 